This is KGW News at Noon. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Brenda Braxton, and we start with breaking news this noon. Governor Kate Brown says all Oregon public schools will return to in-person or hybrid learning by mid-April. Let's look at those specific dates, starting with kids in kindergarten through fifth grade. They'll return by March 29th. The older kids, those in 6th through 12th grade, go back on or before April 19th. But remember, individual students can choose to opt out. Health officials say all but six Oregon counties meet the state's metrics for reopening. Governor Brown says the OHA has two weeks to update its guidance to match her directives. Now, if you have kids or grandkids in school, you know some districts are already doing in-person or hybrid learning. Others, they haven't even started reopening yet. So the pressure is on with today's announcement. And we'll be talking with the governor this afternoon about her decision. We're also reaching out to parents, teachers, and school districts to get their reaction to all of this. Watch for updates on KGW.com and starting with the news at 4 o'clock. So with more kids back in class in some capacity, we wanted to know what happens if someone tests positive for COVID. Oregon districts say they'll work directly with local public health departments. For the most part, it appears various districts have similar protocols. The infected student will be removed from the classroom. Then district officials will contact the parents of kids who may have been exposed. In Tiger Tualatin, administrators say if there's a case of COVID in class, it's likely that all students in the cohort would have to quarantine before they come back. So it's 10 days since, since their first symptom and uh, 24 hours free, fever free without uh, ibuprofen or fear reducing medication and no, no more symptoms or they could get a negative COVID test. Students affected would have to switch to distance learning. Across the board, districts say they want families to make sure kids are healthy and not symptomatic before coming to school. Well, since Oregon eased some of its COVID restrictions, restaurants and bars have started reopening for indoor dining. And according to the governor, they won't have to abruptly shut down again if cases start to go up. 31 of Oregon's 36 counties are no longer at extreme risk for COVID. Extreme is the most dangerous category, and those risk levels determine restrictions. Yesterday, Governor Brown said if a county sees rising cases and hospitalizations, it'll have two weeks to get its numbers in check. It won't automatically have to go back to the tightest restrictions. In the meantime, in Vancouver today, a new mass vaccination clinic opened this morning. If you live in Washington and you're in group 1A or 1B, you can book an appointment on the pharmacy website for Safeway and Albertsons. The clinic is open until 4.30 today, Saturday, Monday and Tuesday. It'll give shots to about 600 people each of those days. Next week, the VA here in Portland says it'll start giving out the new Johnson & Johnson vaccine. As of yesterday, the VA had vaccinated more than 36,000 vets and staffers with the Pfizer and Moderna shots. Veterans can see if they're eligible by going to portland.va.gov. Well, we have really seen a steady stream of rain all morning long, but does that mean that we're going to see rain for the weekend? We want to check in with meteorologist Joe Ranieri and uh, get a peek at what we know. Hey, Joe. Hey there, good afternoon to you, Brenda. Yes, we are gonna be seeing some showers the rest of your Friday afternoon, basically between now and 2.30, 3 o'clock. Of course, we have some Friday night football games uh, later on tonight. They're gonna be basically dry. Of course, the ground might be a little bit on the drippy side, but so far this uh, Friday morning, early part of the afternoon, we have been seeing some showers and be kind of, a, like you said, Brenda, pretty steady uh, since uh, the sunrise show earlier this morning. We'll zoom in a little bit and show you we're also picking up a little mix of some rain and snow showers throughout the Oregon Cascades. Traveling shouldn't be an issue. We're just shy about a tenth of an inch of rain since midnight down in Salem and Corvallis. You're looking at closer to about a, a two tenths to almost a third of an inch in Salem and along the coast uh, over in North Bend. You're looking at close to a half of an inch of rain so far today. Walk out there right now. No surprise, you might need the umbrella and a light jacket. This is a live look from the reserve in Aloha. Temperature at this hour of 48 degrees and over in wine country from our Stoller family estate. A little bit cooler uh, the more south you go along Highway 99. We're looking at temperatures in the low 
low 40s at this hour. So here's what's in store for the rest of your Friday. So by 2.30, 3 o'clock, like I just said, we are going to be seeing some drier weather, mostly cloudy skies out there. And early tomorrow morning, there's a slight chance to see some spotty showers. But I think for the most part, we'll be seeing that sunshine pop by late morning, early part of the afternoon. I am tracking another system that arrives late tomorrow night and into Sunday. I'll break that down for you in your detailed forecast in about 10 minutes from now. Okay, we'll see you then. Thank you, Joe. If you ride the Max Red Line, expect service disruptions this Saturday and Sunday. Crews are replacing about 200 feet of rail near Cascade Station. That means delays between the Gateway Transit Center and PDX. TriMet says shuttle buses will take riders back and forth between those two stations.